Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to this BCI podcast number 12, titled Mean Analyst Rating, or MAR, an Institutional Screening Component. Now, those of you who participate with the BCI methodology for covered call writing or selling cash secured puts know that there's a three-pronged screening process to determine which underlying securities we should use for our option selling. We start with a fundamental analysis, sales and earnings growth. The reason for that is this is what the institutional investors love, stocks with very strong fundamentals. Second, we screen for technicals. We want to see a positive trend and momentum and compare to volume. So we use four parameters. We use 20-day and 100-day exponential moving averages. For momentum, we use the MACD histogram and the stochastic oscillator. And then we compare to volume. Now, of course, you should feel free to use whatever technical parameters you're comfortable with, as long as they include both trend and momentum indicators along with volume. Now, recently, the BCI team added the mean analyst rating, or MAR, to the screening process. And we feel having this institutional component will enhance the quality of the underlying securities that we use for our option selling. So what is MAR? Well, let's start off with what an analyst does. An investment analyst researches financial statements put out by corporations on a quarterly basis. They also listen to conference calls, and they speak with managers and customers of a particular company. And then they come to certain conclusions. Now, these conclusions usually are in the form of buy, sell, or hold. You've all heard that when you turn on CNBC or Bloomberg, an analyst upgrades to a buy or uh, downgrades to a sell. So you've seen this all the time, and this is the result of their investment analyst research on these uh, financial statements. Now, when you take an average of the ratings of all the analysts that follow a particular company, that becomes the mean analyst rating. It's, it's like a consensus of all of the ratings from all of the analysts that follow a particular company. So it's the average. And this particular stat shouldn't in and of itself dictate whether or not we should buy a stock or sell a stock, but it should be used in conjunction with the other three prongs of our analysis, fundamental, technical, and then we also do common sense analysis, things like minimum trading volume, avoiding earnings reports, asset allocation, things along those lines. So uh, it is a component that forms a mosaic as to whether or not a particular company would represent an, an eligible security for short-term option selling. Now, the scale of ratings is actually a little more broad than the ones that I just pointed out, buy, sell, or hold. So let's review those. It, re it goes on a scale of one to five. So the most bullish position, a, a one, is a buy, or a strong buy, actually. Now, number two on the one to five scale would be an outperform. So let's call that a moderate buy. Now, right in the middle of that range, a number three out of five, is a hold, or it's a neutral position. I hate that term, uh, hold, but in any case, it just means that it's not egregious either way. Number four, as we're heading towards the bearish end of the spectrum, means underperform. And we'll call that a moderate sell. And finally, number five is the most bearish of all the analyst ratings, and that's a strong sell. Now, in the BCI methodology, we only accept securities that have mean analyst ratings of one to three. Anything in the higher than three to five range is eliminated as an eligible security. Now, where can we get this information? Well, there are several free sites that give this information. One of them is finviz.com. And when you put in the ticker symbol for a particular security and scroll down, you'll see on the left side of the stats, on the left bottom, you'll see recommendations. 
And the, uh, the one I'm looking at right now, those of you actually watching this podcast, uh, is for Apple. And you could see at the time that the uh, MAR was 2.00. So one free site is finviz.com. Now another is finance.yahoo.com. Here what you do is you put in the ticker symbol for the stock and then click on the word analysis. Then as you scroll down, you will see a bar chart. And the bar chart will tell you the analyst, uh, the MAR for the last four months. And as I'm looking at this now, uh, Apple has a MAR, as it did with finbiz.com, of two, which is a buy rating, moderate buy, if you remember that one to five scale. So both of these are very reliable sites to get MAR rankings. Now in our BCI premium member stock reports, we do include MAR ratings for each security that is eligible. So if it's eligible by definition, it would have a rating of 3.0 or lower. And that is found kind of right in the middle of our uh, eligible screen uh, stocks. And uh, the one that I'm looking at now uh, shows an arrow from 1.70 for EDU all the way down to 1.80 for NOW. So that information is included in our premium stock reports. But for those of you who are not members, you can actually access this, access this information from both of those sites that I alluded to earlier. So let me summarize. Analyst recomm recommendations are a result of analyzing the research reports that come out quarterly. And these uh, financial reports are analyzed, they speak to managers, they listen to conference calls, and they come out with a decision, buy, sell, or hold, using that one to five ranking. We should not use MAR or any other one of our screening parameters in and of themselves. We use it as a mosaic in conjunction with all the others. So if some particular stock has a MAR of 1.5, very bullish, that doesn't mean we automatically buy that stock. We have a look at the fundamentals. We have a look at the chart technicals. We uh, factor in the common sense principles, and then we come to a decision. We also have to make sure that the option premiums that we generate for these securities meet our initial time value return goal range. So there's a lot of factors that come into play. But as you do it more and more, it'll take less and less time. It'll actually become very second nature to you. So adding this institutional component, in my humble opinion, will enhance the quality of our screening process. And that is precisely why the BCI team added more to our screening process. Now, I just want to inform you of some of the free resources on our website, thebluecollarinvestor.com. Uh, if you log into that site in the top black bar, uh, you'll see uh, free resources, including the Elman calculator. Uh, if you click on that and put in your email address, you're in. You can download the calculator uh, to your computer or whatever device you're using, along with its user guide. We also have a free put calculator and many other free resources there. So that's on the website, www.thebluecollarinvestor.com. We have a lot of great information uh, on covered call writing that will take uh, your level of knowledge up to a master level. Uh, the Complete Encyclopedia for Covered Call Writing is the number one selling book on covered call writing on Amazon, but it's on our website. Uh, we have the classic edition, which should be read first, and we have volume two. We also have a brand new covered call writing online uh, DVD program with a downloadable workbook. Um, that I think could be used in conjunction with the books. Some people like to do the DVDs first and then the books or vice versa, but the package of the books and the DVD will really enhance your knowledge level to the point where you'll know more than just about every stockbroker around. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, BCI podcast number 12, Mean Analyst Rating and Institutional Screening Component. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And most importantly, I hope you benefit from it. 
as always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody. <laughs>